Hey there, my name is Aaron Craig with Let's Learn This Together. I talk about game development, tech, and anything else I really like to discuss on this channel. So today, what we're going to be talking about is Xbox Games Pass. Before we begin, I'll let you know that I subscribe to Game Pass, and I have for over a year. I love the service, and I use it often, but my goal here is to create a discussion. I'll do my best to put my bias aside so we can talk about it, and whether it really is worth the price. This video is not sponsored or affiliated with Microsoft, Xbox, or anyone else in any way. I just want to have a discussion because this is something that I use, and you probably use, or maybe have heard of, and you're interested in. First, let's discuss what a subscription service even is. I'm sure you already know, and maybe you're already sick of them. They've grown exponentially in the past few years, encompassing all areas of life. You can get a subscription for dog treats, comic books, movies, and everything in between. They're not limited to Netflix and HBO. You can subscribe to almost anything these days for just a small fee. But those small fees start to add up. In 2019, the average American spent $640 a year on subscription services like Spotify, cloud storage, Netflix, and so on. Even though each one is only a few dollars a month, the services start to add up. It becomes essential to pick only the best ones for you and leave the others by the wayside. I bring this up because there are so many subscription options, even in the gaming realm. Instead of subscribing to Xbox Game Pass, you could buy Humble Choice, PS Now, EA Origin Access, and more. What makes Game Pass worthy of your money, especially when it's on the more expensive side? Let's break down what you get with Game Pass. There are two tiers. The first one is just $9 a month, and it gets you access to their game library on either Xbox or PC. They boast well over 100 games, including Microsoft exclusives like Gears of War, Halo, and now Bethesda titles like Doom and Elder Scrolls. You can play them as much as you like. There's no limit to game time, downloads, or anything like that. The selection on PC is different than that of Xbox, coming in with a little less variety, but still allowing for a large selection of great titles. The $15 tier includes Xbox Live Gold, and Game Pass for PC and Xbox. This is the tier I use as I like to play some games on my computer, but then do family games on the Xbox. With the recent acquisition of Bethesda, they've now got Elder Scrolls and Doom on there too, which is awesome. At this tier, you can get access to their game streaming so you can play your games on Android phones and tablets, and even iOS coming soon. Along with EA Play, there are a lot of great games to choose from, and you can easily get your money's worth in a month. So what kind of games do you really get in Game Pass? I've said they've got a lot, and I've mentioned a few titles, but do they have anything that you would be interested in? My guess would be yes. To just mention a few and a good variety, they have Titanfall 1 and 2, Unravel 1 and 2, Ori and the Blind Forest, Star Wars Squadron, Sim City, Peggle, Plants vs. Zombies, Need for Speed, all of the Mass Effect games, Mirror's Edge, the Dead Space trilogy, and several Final Fantasy games. On top of these big name games, they've got smaller titles like Among Us, Narita Boy, Star Renegades, River City Girls, and Carrion. I could continue going on and on, but you should just check out their website and a list of games yourself. It'll be a lot faster. I think it's fair to say that their selection is wide and all-encompassing. There's at least one game for every kind of player on there, if not a few, even for the picky players. And if you're not sure, they also offer the first month, sometimes even the first three, for just one dollar a month. It's how they get new customers on board, it's how they finally got me. For that price, it's hard to resist, and then once you're used to having such a large selection of games to choose from, it's hard to go back. But what about the downsides? Game Pass isn't perfect after all. One of the most annoying things about it is the rotation of games. Getting new games is great and necessary to keep the subscription alive, but that means they also take games out. They've gotten better about letting you know which games are leaving and when, and they offer 20% discounts if you buy a game while it's still on Game Pass, but the frustration is still there. They often remove popular games, Sometimes games you're in the middle of playing, forcing you to spend money on top of what you're already paying. It would be nice if they never had to remove any games at all. And for the gamers who don't rotate through games much, the service isn't a very good deal. 
since it is $9 to $15 a month, if you play one game for 3 to 7 months, depending on the tier you're on, you'd be better off buying that game outright. This is especially true if you stick with games longer than that, like big MMOs, such as Elder Scrolls. You can get a discount on all DLC for that game while subscribed, but if all you play is that one game, you'll save a lot of money buying it instead of paying for the subscription service. On the flip side of that, if you don't have much time for gaming, the service will also cost you more in the long run. The same logic applies, just kind of reversed. If you only get one hour a day to game, you may be sticking with a single game for many months before you can beat it. Game Pass may cycle that game out before you're done, or you'll have paid more for Game Pass than simply buying the game itself. It's safe to say that Game Pass isn't for everyone, but I think it's also safe to say it's one of the better services out there. Compared to others, Game Pass will give you more choice, more discounts, and more freedom in how and where you play. I've used some other gaming services before, like Humble Choice, but in the end I always found myself going back to Game Pass for their huge library and new games. What about you though? Do you use Game Pass? Do you use it for the Xbox or PC? Do you enjoy it? What do you not like about it? And on the other side, if you don't use Game Pass at all, why not? Does it just not fit? Does it not have the games you're looking for? Or is there something specific that you just really don't like about it? I would really love to hear your opinion and have a discussion in the comments below. Just keep it civil, keep it clean, and let's talk about Game Pass and everything about it. I use it, I love it, and my family gets a lot of enjoyment out of it, especially my kids who spend all day playing if I would let them, which I don't. But let's talk about it in the comments down below. And as always, keep making, keep learning, and I'll talk to you later. My name is Aaron Craig and I'm a teacher and game developer at Let's Learn This Together. And my passion is to get you into game development. It is not impossible and you don't need a math degree. And if you have the desire, then we can make it happen. This book is designed to take total newbies to game developers in just 30 days. And you don't need a lick of programming or game design experience. It's simple and broken down into easy to manage chunks that will keep you entertained and encouraged along the way. Just give me one hour a day for the next month to turn your dream into a reality. So head on over to letslearnthistogether.com to order your copy of So You Want to Be a Game Developer today. And I'll see you on the other side. A huge thank you to all of the awesome people who support me over on Patreon. Their names are on the screen now, and every dollar pledged helps me create more awesome content. You can support me for as little as $1 a month and get access to exclusive perks like my Discord server, your name in the credits, early access to my YouTube videos and courses, and more. Check it out at patreon.com slash letslearnthistogether.com or find the link in the description below and become a patron today.